What's up everybody, Renfail here, back again with Baldur's Gate 3 Fun, and today we're talking about the game in its totality, and should you play it? Is it worth it? We're here a little bit past uh, a month after the game has launched, they've done multiple hot fixes. they've done a couple of big patches, there's more coming down the road, I am around 100 hours into my main campaign, and I'm still firmly in Act 3, I would anticipate I've got at least another month ahead of me, perhaps more before I actually finish my first official playthrough, because I'm doing multiple playthroughs at the same time, and the live stream one is the one that takes precedence, and... There are a lot of great things in Baldur's Gate 3, but it would be disingenuous if I didn't also talk about the jank and some of the stuff that is taking away for some people. I have had a very pleasant experience. I would give this game a 10 out of 10 across the board. I think it's easily, if not my ultimate game of the year, it's up there in the number one, you know, vying for number one slot right now. Um, hands down the best CRPG I've played since Baldur's Gate 2. It's the first game since Baldur's Gate 2 to take that spot away. And if I have to be honest, as much fun as I'm having in Starfield, um, this is still my personal, like, it's edging out Starfield. And I don't know where Phantom Liberty is going to come in with Cyberpunk 2.0, but right now, you know, this game is clocking it on all levels. Larian did something super special with this game. Um... I don't want to say genre defining because that remains to be seen if it's going to be, you know, if, if other companies are going to follow suit. But I do think that they did something outside of the box. And what they did is incredibly amazing, even though, yes, it has its jank. So we're going to go into this understanding that I have a deep passion for this game. I played early access for about three years before I got into like heavy content production around this game. Um, and it has become a major staple of my channel. And I hope that it's going to be a staple for my channel for many, many years to come, because I am personally going to be enjoying lots of playthroughs of this game over the next couple of years, at least. And hopefully you are along for that ride. And if that sounds good to you, make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icons you never miss an update join the streams that happen at 11 a.m every single day central time here on the channel join the discord links are down below check out all the member videos for those of you who are members without further ado let's talk Baldur's gate 3 is it worth it should you play it um, this isn't actually a first impressions video because i've already done a couple of those i've had some early thoughts on things but this is definitely a let's talk about you know is it worth it should you play it um because there are some caveats. So, it is a great game. Act 1, incredibly polished, and it kind of feels like no matter what you do, no matter what you throw at the, at the wall, everything sticks. And there's not really any performance issues, there's really no bugs, everything works. But they also had three years of polishing that Act 1 throughout the early access. And yes, they had people testing Act 2 and Act 3, but this is where the seams, you know, we start to see things, you know, the seams are starting to come unraveled just a tiny bit. Act 2 definitely has more polish than Act 3. Um, Act 2, when I was playing through it, and this has been a couple of weeks ago now since I got through, I've been in Act 3 for like two weeks firmly. Like, I got through Act 1 pretty quick, Act 2 took me longer, Act I've been in Act 3 for like half the time I've been playing the game. Act 3 is massive. You'll start to see things in Act 2, and it's not really performance related, it's mostly just like little things where um, I had cutscenes that got triggered before I actually had done something else related to that. And so the story kind of got spoiled because I was like, oh, that's got to be a cutscene related to that thing, which hasn't happened yet. So we went and did the thing to clear the bug. And they were very open when they were doing the hot fixing stuff that we haven't fixed everything, but we have created workarounds for most things. And so that's what I have personally found is nothing has been game breaking for me yet, but there have been lots of bugs where I've had to find workarounds and I've had to reload the game and, and try to find ways to get around things. Um, Act 2, you know, I would say whereas Act 1 is highly polished and is incredibly, you know, it feels like a, you know, just an amazing game. Act 2 is the quality starting to go down a little bit because uh, they didn't have as much testing. Act 3, I started to see little things as we were going through Act 3, and the deeper I have gotten into Act 3, the more pronounced those things have become to the point where the last three streams in particular... Every single stream, we're coming up against some pretty major jank with um, cutscenes that are completely out of place, not triggering properly. Um, uh, at the purpose for the purposes of storyline, I'm going to say something here, but I do want to have a spoiler alert for this because 
This is for context. But um, fair warning, um, there is some spoiler. I'm going to try to talk about it in as spoiler-free way as I can, but it might still be spoilery, so you've been warned. There are two different that I've come across. There may be more, but there have been two different um, quest lines related to solving murders. One in the upper city and one in the lower city. That's the spoilery part. The one that happened in the upper city, um, there's a certain object that's supposed to be looted from one of the corpses, and I could never find that item in my inventory. And one of my community members actually went back and rewatched my stream and sent me some screenshots and was like, this is why it never dropped for you. So the item was never there. So I can't complete that quest. Even if I wanted to complete the quest on my Druid's playthrough, which has been a complete live stream playthrough, I don't have a hard save. Like it, it that was that was 20 hours ago in gameplay. So I'm never going to be able to complete that particular quest unless they magically patch the object into my inventory um, from that quest. Um, then there is another murder mystery happening in the lower city where um, it's tied to the first one I guess actually it might be completely related to the first one now that I'm thinking about it I think it is related to the first one completely anyway but you're in the lower city and one of the individuals you're tracking down I like went into this building and was going up the stairs and all of a sudden I realize that Gale wasn't with me, and suddenly I'm like, Gale's in a conversation, what happened? And I, I find out that Gale's all the way back in a completely different other area, and he's locked in this conversation that I had no idea he was in, because the mob had triggered a proximity alert to my party, and Gale got sucked into that conversation, even though we were nowhere near where that was taking place. Another case of that happening, exact same thing, was um, the, the conversation that um, again, spoiler alert here. Um, part of Gale's storyline has him wanting <laughs> to do something about a certain object that can be worn. And there's a moment where you can have a conversation with a certain devil. I had never had that conversation, and yet suddenly at my camp, Gale is wanting to talk to me, and I go have a conversation with him, and he's freaking out about the conversation, and I'm like, I haven't had that conversation yet. What? And another time of that happening was... Um, yesterday um uh during the stream where you know we were in the process of trying to get into this building and an ambush happened we got like three quarters of the way through the fight and all of a sudden it triggered <laughs> it triggered the cutscene that was supposed to precede the ambush that triggered it like three quarters of the way through the fight and suddenly it's like we're, we're getting a cutscene literally in the middle of a fight scene so there have been lots of little things like that. It's not game-breaking by any means, but they are there's little things triggering out of place. And the deeper I get into Act 3, the more little things I uncover to where it's like, okay, Act 3 is is pretty bug. Like, it's pretty jank. It's playable. It's not like Cyberpunk 2077 where it's unplayable. Like, when that game launched, I played it through on the PS4 Slim, and I, had, I kept getting blue screen crashes right and left, and that made it very difficult for me to actually play through. And I did. I, I went through and suffered through it. I still loved the game, even though it was a janky hot mess. Um, and it's the same thing here. Like, I haven't had any game-breaking bugs, not, nothing. I haven't had any crashes that I could think of. Not even in early access, I've never crashed Baldur's Gate 3. But yeah, there's lots of cutscenes getting triggered in wrong places, objects not dropping. Yesterday, uh, again during yesterday's stream, um, we were down in this crypt and we did this thing and we looted this object off of a body and then the object was in our inventory but it was still triggering as though it was on the corpse. And so I'd go into my map and it would show me like it never updated the POI for my quest. And so I didn't know where I was supposed to go next because the, ob the quest objective had, had updated in my journal but it hadn't updated in the quest tracker, so the map was still showing me needing to go to this one place, even though I hadn't, and I'd already been there. And so what I had to do was I just saved, reloaded, and as soon as I reloaded, it did that. The other one was there's a certain point of the quest line where I had an, an object that I had looted off one of the boss mobs, and it's needed to progress the quest. The problem is Lazale had looted it, and Lazale's not my main character. But even though she had looted it, it didn't trigger that we had looted the objective. And, and so I was on the internet looking up bugs going, because this happened during a live stream, and I was like, what is going on here? Because I've done all the right steps. I know we're supposed to be able to get through this door over here. What's going on? And it turns out that um, if you don't have that item on your main character, it doesn't trigger 
with the quest tracker that you've actually updated the quest. And so as soon as I moved it from Lazale's inventory to my main character's inventory, the journal update happened and it was like, oh, okay, now I can proceed with the main quest. So there is a lot of jankiness going on and I'm playing it on the PC. Um, I can't speak too much to performance other than there are some issues, but I am also on older hardware, so I'm not going to speak to performance too much other than to say, for the most part, I haven't had any issues. I'm on a 1080. Um, when I'm streaming, I run it on medium settings. When I'm not streaming, I run it on ultra, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than 30 for sure. Um, I, there's been times where there have been some frame drops below 30, um, and it's mostly been related to weird issues with that I'm assuming are things like LODs, and just texturing because as an example and also vfx because i remember this was before hotfix 2 hotfix 2 did fix a lot of things but before hotfix 2 as an example every time i would drink a potion from and this only was when, when i was in controller mode it didn't have anything to do with mouse and keyboard mode i was fine but if i was in controller mode on the pc every time i drank a potion whether it was from my inventory or from the radial menu the VFX related to the drinking of a potion to heal hit points, there's like a blue-white light and like, you know, the hit point value. That animation, that VFX animation would tank my frames and I would go down into like, you know, single frames for the moments, you know, that split two seconds or whatever that that VFX and drinking animation happens. And it would tank the frames every time. Hotfix came, that picked, that fixed that issue. But I will still find random things. I'll be, I'll be running along and I'll be getting, you know, normal frames, you know. 40-ish, 50-ish, and all of a sudden, I'll, like, pan the camera in a certain area, and it'll just, you'll feel it, like, lurch, and you're like, okay, what just happened, and if you turn, if you come back around, you'll figure out that there's something in the environment, it might be a barrel, it, we don't, you know, it's hard to pinpoint is what it is exactly, but it's usually, you can pinpoint where it's happening, because it's only when you look in a certain direction, so you're, you're like, okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something over there. So it might be a barrel, it might be a basket of corn, it might be, you know, a door. But something is triggering an FPS drop, and that's a performance-related issue where there's probably an asset in there that hasn't been properly LOD'd or textured or something, or it's running way high polys or something. And it's, it's just as soon as the camera comes around and draws that image, it goes. Wah! Um, so I've definitely seen more of that in Act 3 than in anywhere else. And I've heard that on the PS5, Act 3 is still pretty, uh, has having some issues with performance even on the PS5. So I'd say that that's just something that's going to take them some time to be able to get optimized in the way that they want it to be optimized. Now, I will say this, because I know a lot of people have liked to poke the finger at other companies and say, you know, let, you know CD Projekt Red did this. Bethesda did this, buggy launches, you know, buggy launch from this company, buggy launch from this company, buggy launch, and I've seen overwhelmingly positive from Larian Studios, but there have been a few people who, and I think they are fairly criticizing, have said, hang on a second, Larian actually has just as many bugs as all these other companies with their games. The difference here, is, however, is the response time to the bugs. I will use Cyberpunk 2077 as an example. It took them almost two years to fully patch Cyberpunk 2077 on older consoles, right? Not on the Xbox Series X, PS5, or the high-end PCs, but on the last-gen consoles and everything else. It took them like two years to patch that game up to a playable state. Um, and, you know, the patch notes were sometimes months in between. That has not been the case with Larian. Larian has literally been, as soon as the game came out, it was like, boom, here's a hotfix, here's a hotfix, here's a hotfix, here's patch one, here's a hotfix, here's a hotfix, here's a patch two. I remember being so shocked because they announced patch two one afternoon. I woke up the next morning and went to go play, and my patcher was updating. And I'm like, and then I go on Twitter, and I see uh, Sven had posted that, oh, we pushed patch two out over the night. And it was like, you guys are, like, freaking amazing. Like... They are on the ball about it in a way that not a lot of other companies are. So, I've said all of that to say this. Should you play Baldur's Gate 3? Is it worth it? Because all I've talked about through this video is the jank, right? If you're new here, you, you haven't listened to me rant and rave about how amazing this game is for the past few months. Baldur's Gate 3 is, like I said, it's the best CRPG I've ever played period hands down 
there have there have been a lot of games I've played over the years that came close to what Baldur's Gate 2 achieved, but none of them ever took the crown until now. So I'm glad it was a Baldur's Gate game that did this. Um, it is absolutely magical. Um, there are some amazing emotional moments in this story so far. I'm only 100 hours in, almost. I'm not quite there. Um, I was actually going to wait on making this video until after I hit 100 hours, but then stuff happened during yesterday's stream. Quick commercial like... break, everyone, to give a shout out to our first official guild officer, Bubblonia, as well as all of the guild champions, and of course, all of the members who help keep me on the air full time. To join as a member, simply click that join button below and pick your tier, but you can also support with super chats on any live stream or premiere, or super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video. Stream where I was like, oh my god, I, I, then I have another, there's going to be another story video that's coming out alongside this one where I talk about some of those things. Full spoiler alert for those videos, so, you know, make sure you pay attention to that. Um, because there were some story things that happened that made me go, I need to stop and talk about this because I'm still a hell of a long way away from finishing the game and I'm already seeing all these things and this is an amazing throwback to this, this, and this. Um, I've not had a game hit me emotionally like this in a long time, like making me cry during live streams and just joy, tears of joy, tears of sadness, tears of emotional, just overwhelmingly, I'm just overwhelmingly satisfied. It's just a very, very good game. Um... It's very admirable what Larian did. They took a big risk by building their own mocap studio from scratch. And for the most part, I'd say that, um, you know, I, I see a lot of people out there right now making fun of Bethesda because they, they're like, you know, um, Starfield doesn't look as good as Baldur's Gate 3. And I think those people are being slightly unfair because they're not realizing how much jank has existed with Larian Studios and getting all of like the short the short character animations to match up with the tall characters and also just there has been some absolute craziness happening in terms of wonkiness in the animations and cutscenes, and i've seen some weird stuff happening with with animations and things but for a company to build a mocap studio from scratch just for a game and to pull it off in the way that they did is very much i mean they're it's very much in, in terms of what they did, it's a lot like what Red Dead Redemption 2 had. You know, what, what um, Rockstar did with, like, the GTA games, and uh, especially Red Dead Redemption 2, where it wasn't just the actors doing voiceovers, it was the actors doing full motion capture for the game. God of War as well, um, with Christopher Judge, you know, indeed. Just, just amazing stuff happening with companies that are willing to put time into having a full motion capture performance. And I think that... Um, even though there is some jank to some of the mocap, um, it's not perfect by any means. They did a very good job. And I remember w there's a moment with Lazale, which I've spoiled in other places, so it's not going to matter here so much. But when you when she has that moment in your camp early in Act 1 um, where she's you're, you're all waking up and you're all having night sweats and she's you know having this moment of panic where she thinks that she's going to get taken over and and she breaks down in front of you and you can see that on her face so it was a combination of the super talented voice acting voice acting going on the super amazing mocap that was being done and also just the the level of technology they had to capture the essence in the eyes and the facial expression along with the voice of the actress in hand it's something special the writing is for the most part extremely well done um i finished i finished shadow at least i think i finished shadow Heart's story today during this morning's stream and i'm recording this on sunday the uh, september 10th um and the the ending is super at least the ending i got because remember there's hundreds of different you know th 17 thousand different endings in this game um so i don't know how many variations they have of shadow hearts ending um i'm gonna spoil this so you've had your warning um my version was restoring shadow heart to her previous glory um or her previous background and part of that and i'm, I'm spoiling some of that i'm not gonna spoil all of it but some of that uh, revolved around her her family and it's a very it's a very bittersweet ending. It's not a it's not a bad ending at all, but it was very bittersweet. But I was like watching this sequence unfold before me, and I was just like feeling so much emotion at what was going on. It was like, man, this is for a game to be able to transport you there in such a way. And I say all of that be 
against the fact that I've been very public about how I hate turn-based games, but Larian has managed to transcend my dislike of turn-based because everything else they've done here is so amazing, which is why even though I hate turn-based, and even though there's jankiness, and even though there's bugs and performance is not that great in Act 3, I still think it's absolutely worth it if you love good storytelling and everything else. However, if you're someone who needs the entire experience to be completely polished because you hate companies releasing buggy launches and you hate companies that launch games before they're actually polished and you don't want any bugs and you don't want to see jank and you don't want to see you know performance issues and you need it to be perfect, then you should wait. Wait for them to spend the rest of this year to get everything completely polished. Wait for them to get all the hot fixes on the PS5. Wait for the Xbox Series X release that's going to happen. Maybe even wait for the definitive edition that's going to come down the pipeline at some point. Because you know, you know Larian's going to do that because they've done it before with the Divinity Original Sin games. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The game's not going anywhere. And all Larian is going to do is make it better with time. I think it's really good right now. I... Per but again, personally, I'm willing to put up with the jank because of all the things I love about it. So I'm still willing to give it a 10 out of 10 despite the fact that it has issues. Not everyone else is going to do that. A lot of people are going, oh no, it's a 6 out of 10 until they fix everything. That's their opinion. This is my channel, so I do it my way on this channel. So I think you should play it if you love D&D and you love good storytelling and you love complex combat and you love just visually breathtaking views and lots of variation play with your friends it's got you know four person co-op it's got split screen co-op if you want to play with your spouse or your significant other or your family members at home um it's out of the pc ps5 now as well as pc and it is coming to the xbox series x and s later this year so um for my money i think it is worth box price um i supported them years ago when it first came out on early access and i've never been disappointed with that decision whatsoever and in my mind Laren Studios could do no wrong right now. Obviously, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure they'll they'll come a time when they will do something that pisses everybody off, but it hasn't happened yet because right now they are the world's unicorn in terms of uh, an indie game developer who said, look what we can do, and all the AAAs are kind of going, oh, wow, that's, um, wow, yeah, yeah. Anyway, food for thought, everybody. I think you should play it. I think it's worth it, but those are just my thoughts. If you liked my video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams at 11 a.m., member videos for all of these here members, and of course, don't forget the Discord links are down below. We'll see you in the next video or live stream, everybody. Until then, stay safe and happy gaming.